covered a hundred miles of curved and rutted Long Island Road and was so accident-ridden it had to be abandoned. By 1914, the year these seats were taken, dirt track racing was a national sport. When wheels squirted off, as they often did, drivers kept on going. On dry days, dust was kicked into a blinding, choking, almost solid wall. The public interest was stimulated. And new developments tested amid the racetrack's dirt and danger. At Altoona, Pennsylvania, they got rid of the dust by building a wondrous wooden saucer, which became more oil-soaked and slippery with each passing year. Through the 1910s and 20s, the auto racing craze was at its height. Still bulky and unpredictable, automobiles seemed living things with personalities all their own. Like the horses before them, family cars and racers were given pet names, praised when they performed, and soundly cussed when they didn't. In 1911, the Indianapolis 500 zoomed off on a brick track while old-time cameras cranked. With time out for two world wars, this most famous of American auto races has been held every Memorial Day since. saw the birth of the Pikes Peak Climb. Its course, this hairpin road, snaking in 12 and a half almost perpendicular miles, 5,000 feet up the side of the mountain. Its purpose, to test not only a car's speed, but of more importance, its endurance. For it was the automobile's ever-increasing dependability that was rapidly putting the nation on wheels. More autos meant a last, more action. A problem this inventor solved with a crash-proof bumper, only to discover he had also invented the world's most rapid exit. Another genius devised this supreme test. Kerplunk, flunk, jump. Back in 1916, cars came of every conceivable shape and size. There were 140 different U.S. manufacturers then. Today, there are six. This Denver, Colorado street scene of 1919 shows that the traffic jam had come to stay. On New York's Fifth Avenue, also in 1919, the snarl led to the first traffic lights. Complicated affairs operated by policemen in towers high above the hubbub. By 1920, one out of every 13 Americans owned a car. The success of the auto spurred inventors on to new achievements, like this locomotive car with smokestack and coal furnace, which all too quickly puffed into history. The torpedo car was designed to go six miles a minute if it didn't by accident sail straight off to Mars. Probably no vehicle ever looked so fast and went so slow. One inventor attempted to solve the problem of streamlining with a backwards car. He didn't cut down on wind resistance much, but boy, how he startled the other drivers. Francis Submarine Car was supposed to travel not only on land, but on and on the other water. And surprisingly enough, that is exactly what he did, closing downward until only the smokestack marked its path. Oh, what a place to run out of gas. Most novel of auto inventions was England's dinosphere, which did away with the car entirely and just used the tire. The driver acted as an inner tube. What a position of flight will be in if the thing has a blowout. Jawohl, science really much forward with Germany's rocket car. The first model ran on a track. There was, of course, one small problem. <laughs>